Come on through, cocky. I want to put my soapbox. That's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is actually going to be my review for Love and Hip Hop Season 7, Episode 11, Love and Hip Hop New York. Well, we start right in with that whole debacle with Yandy and Erica and Samantha and this whole thing. So they were still breaking them up and all of that. So all of that was cool. They finally get everything kind of, you know, calmed down. And Yandy ends up saying to Samantha, listen, the hell with all of this. This is really about the kids. Judy speaks up. She's like, yes, this is about the kids. Let it be about the kids. This is what I keep hearing them say, but it never actually gets to that. They always start arguing about this bullshit, really, about Bandisi. Is what they, they're arguing about. It's the dick that they're arguing about. This has never been about the kids. This is about the fact that you got one woman over here who is in love with the man and the man is in love with her. And you got two women over here who have fucked the man and still wants to continue fucking the man. They want the man and that's why they have the problem. That's the problem. It's Mandisis. They want, Erica and Samantha want Mandisis. Period. And they hate Andy. They hate Yandy for that reason. Yandy's done whatever it is that Yandy's done because Mandisi's allowed Yandy to do it. You know, she ain't been right in everything she's done, but that's the, the big problem is about they want Mandisi's. That's the problem. That's what I see. But anyway, so, and Erica ain't nothing but a trick and she can be bought. And I'm going to show you. Here we go. So Yandy says, well, listen, Mandisi's, wants me to plan a party for little man DC's birthday and and we all come together with it and she's like you're not uh-uh 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 yeah DC you need to learn your place you're not planning my son's birthday party no you're not no it's not going to happen you're not going to be a part of it this that and the other then Yandy said and I don't know if y'all caught this but Yandy said well let let me rephrase it Mandisi's wants us to get together and, and put the party together, and he's going to pay for it. Okay, that's more like it. You trick-ass bitch. Because that's the exact same thing. But as long as there's a dollar figure put on a seat, that's the difference between Erica and Samantha. Samantha can be bought. Okay? She's fine. Because if it's Mandisi's just paying for it, who's putting it together? Yandy, right? The fuck out of here. I was so done. I said, this is bullshit. I was like, get the, get, moving the fuck on. Damn, Samantha. She ain't, now she's just trifling. But that's what I've seen of her. She's do all this fuss about little man DCs. And it sounds like little man DCs be with everybody except for motherfucking Samantha. She's trifling. Anyway, moving on. Amina then had another little girl, which her name is Bronx. That is Peter Gunn's 10th baby. 10th. And it was so funny because then Peter was actually meeting with the guys and he's basically telling DJ Self and Rich that Amina has moved to LA. So she got both girls, both her girls. She's in LA doing what she wants to do, doing what she needs to do, trying to get her career moving and and, and raising the girls, and he's going to definitely co-parent with her, but he's staying in New York, and he's planning on getting back with Tara. Really? Cold-blooded. Cold-blooded, and I believe him. I believe, you know, I believe that this is what he would prefer. He likes Tara. He don't really like Abena. He did whatever he did with Amina, some young girls, some coochie. He, he did what he did. 
But I believe that Peter loves Tar and he would prefer to be with Tar. And Tar would prefer to be with me with um with Peter. Because when he presented her with that bullshit, that bitch was yelling and screaming like she usually do. And I think that makes his dick hard when she starts all that screaming and hollering. I think he likes it. But she's doing all that screaming and hollering that she do. But all while it was going on, you could see her wheel spinning like, oh, I'm going to get my man back. She was just as happy. She was just as happy with it because she lives for the confusion. She likes the confusion and and the conflama, which is Peter Gunn's. She likes all that. I think she gets off on it as well. Um, you know, there's some people who need you to dog them. It's like a, a inset thing. They need you to dog them so they can scream and yell and act a damn fool. And Tar is very much that way. But then on top of this, she done wrote this book about self relationship and all. Girl, eleven ninety five a copy. Girl, ain't nobody listening to you. Who's going to listen to you? If they've watched you on it, trust me, they don't listen to you about what you should do, life wise. And you, we didn't watch you with this shit. Girl, sit down. Later on in the program, Peter throws Tara a 40th birthday party. Real nice party. All the family was there. Flew her brother in and all this. Then he stood up there and made a speech about how sorry he was to all the friends who have had to see them fighting, to all the friends. It was real nice. To the friends that have uh, supported Tara when she was crying on their shoulder when he was dogging her out. And he really, I mean, and I felt like it was really a heartfelt apology. And everybody was like, well, you know, good. She was just as happy as a sissy in Boys Town, honey. She used to cry and carry them. Then he talked to the brother, and her brother was like, you know, he didn't bought it too. I said, damn. He just punked them all down. He's like, okay, I'm get my woman back. And I just looked and I was like, child, God bless them, honey. We don't need to see no more of it, honey. Because I'm sure in the next season, she'll be screaming and yelling about something else. And she got a brand new baby, too. Baby under a year old. That's the ninth. Amina got the tenth. Soon as he goes, soon as Peter goes to L.A. to visit, Amina and her two kids, Tara will be screaming and hollering again because he's going to go up there and fuck her. A mess. And T-Way. So, this part got me. Uh, this was too much. Papoose and Remy. Papoose and Remy meet up for dinner. She brings this great big gigantic box. And he opens the box and out comes all of the balloons. She's pregnant and they're going to be having a baby. And it was like, oh, it was so nice. It was really, really so nice. Then we actually, as we start getting close to the end of the show, we're seeing that there's somebody in the hospital that's saying, get well. And it, they got me. Mona, you got me on this one because I was like, who, who's sick? Who did got sick? Never crossed my mind that it was Remy. Remy was the one that was actually sick. And we found out in, in the show, she ended up, she lost the baby. She lost the baby. And they their doctor doesn't even suggest that she try to produce again. And poor Remy, oh, she broke my heart. She did. She broke my heart. She just, you know, she went through that whole thing. We watched her go through that whole thing of why this is not fair. How much do I have to pay? What You know what I mean? What did I do that, you know, that things just go bad every time I think I'm in a good space? I felt so bad for Remy. You know, and she's like, this is just not fair. And I'm like, okay. But Papoose was really, really good with her. You know, he didn't play into it, which you know, I know he wanted to. I know he wanted to. You know, I've done all this. I've helped raising her kids, this, that, and the other. And then when it comes time, she gets pregnant with my baby. And now her system won't hold it. And, and, you know, that's those times when you really be questioning the powers that be. Like, really? Like, why now? You know? But they just got to go pray on it. And that's and I think they'll be good because they do have that, that type of background. And Papoose is strong enough to pull Remy through that. That's why I like them as a couple, just watch them as a couple. He's strong enough to pull him and her through this. Um, man, I felt bad for them. But this, again, and I hate that. When the, the, the few times that we actually get to see 
real reality TV. It got to be something bad. You know what I mean? But I felt so bad for them. But I, I'm sure they'll be okay because they are a strong a strong unit and it's not for, for TV. Papoose and Remy are a strong couple. Um, same thing with Yandy and Mandisis. Yandy and Mandisis, they fucked up. But they 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 love each other, and you can tell that that ain't no put on. They love each other. Anyway, but I felt so bad for poor Ruby and Papoose. Um, I'm gonna move on. Um, oh, it was fucked up. Cardi, Cardi B, Cardi got a letter from Tommy. Motherfucker wrote her a letter from jail to break up with her. Really, Tommy? You broke up with her. Girl, Cardi, don't worry about it, honey, because whatever little boy he's twirling around with down there at the jailhouse, you don't want to be a part of that no way. To fuck, fuck it. He did you a favor. I, I couldn't get it. Honey. I, again, motherfuckers in jail calling home on your dime, cussing you out, talking shit to you, and a motherfucker in jail going to write you a letter, break it up with you. Bitch, I ain't never seen such. That's a, just a, ridiculous. But anyway, so that was that. Child, Hennessy got better sense than most, honey. She took his picture and set that bitch on fire. It's a girl, fuck that, move on. So later on in the program, um, we had Swift and Cardi sat down and they both, they basically got to talk and Cardi told him, you know, I miss you and this, that, and the other. You know, he lost his girlfriend, like, with her pushed in face. And uh, Cardi is single now. And he's like, well, you know, it is what it is. And he just was happy to start working with Cardi again and being around Cardi. And I just kind of laughed. I was like, got him, you know. So she invited him to dinner. And he ended up going to dinner with Cardi B and her family. And during the time they were there, oh, you could see Cardi's cousins and family members. They just loved it. They just loved his little funny look and stuff. And they was picking, 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 how to give him. Well, what's going on, you know. Then honey Hennessy caught him up in the corner, baby, and told him, listen. My sister, you like my sister, right? He said, yeah, she said, she's single now. What you waiting on? You better get her. You better get her now while the getting is good, while you got a chance. I said, oh, come on through, Hennessy. So I think, you know, in the next, he's going to go ahead and, and go snatch Cardi up. Go on and get her. Go on and get her. You, and you fucked up your relationship behind her, so you might as well give it a, give it a shot. Okay, next we got... Uh, Yandy had met up with uh, Kim Bella. Kim Bella's crazy. Kim Bella's losing her goddamn mind. She had too much bleach on the wigs that is seeping down through her fucking brain. She keeps put. She's putting Yandy in a position. She's so insecure when it comes to jewels, and she wants Yandy to tell her things about jewels. And Yandy's like, "Honey, I can't do that. I can't do that." And she's like, "I'm like, they're gonna break up as friends again." With this bullshit. Because Yandy's right. No, you can't tell her about Jewel's business. Then Jewel ends up meeting with Yandy and basically tells Yandy off. I'm like, damn, she's right back in the middle. He tells her off about the whole Kim Bella situation and then tells her, you know, you get to work and do the work you do. I'm like, she just got sucked right into the middle of that bullshit. Anyway, she met up with Juju. And Juju invited her. They're going to have a Mexican vacation. They're going to go to Mexico. So it's going to be Juju, Yandy. They're taking Jay and Kimbella. Um, going to be interesting with Jay. Like, I, you know, they took to her and they're trying to show her stuff. But that bitch is crazy. So I wouldn't want to go nowhere with her. I wouldn't go to the corner store with that motherfucker. But that's basically it. That's all that really went on with this episode. It was a pretty good episode, too. This one, this one was good. All right. I will talk to you guys next week. Later, guys.